Hey everybody, welcome to my usual me and welcome back to Kenshi. Okay guys, I went ahead and I got my system worked out and now I have more than a half a million cats in my pocket. And I'm going to show you today what I did to get that. If you look right here, I have 559,545 cats at the moment. Now it's day, 100, day 211 because I was working out what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. But now I've got my system down and I'm making tens of thousands of cats per day. It's not difficult at all once you reach this level, once you get to where I'm at. But if you look at my armor, you can see it's all scavenged. I, it's not, I don't have any like set really good armor. It's all stuff that I've found, all such stuff that I scavenged because I've been focusing on the money aspect of things. And I'm going to show you how to get tens of thousands of caps a day so you can have like, I mean, I'm talking about in an in-game day. So you can have, you know, half a million caps before you even know it. Now for me, guys, I went ahead and I started as a wanderer and I started in the hub. Right? So I started in the hub, and what I didn't know until later, I'm going to bypass a lot of the mistakes that I did early on, just so you don't have to. On the western side of the hub, guys, I went ahead, and what I would suggest you do right off the bat, is go down south, and you, if, you have, if you're a wanderer, you're going to have a thousand cats. Immediately, I would go down to Squin, and I would go to the backpack shop, and I would buy a wooden backpack. This is the wooden backpack right here. And it's 800, uh, the value is 800 cats, so you're going to have 200 cats to spare. So I would, I would go and I would buy that right away. This is the town of Squin. This is the southern part of Squin right here. I actually own this, this, this house right here. We'll get to that in a minute. But the backpack shop, guys, is right here. It's right near the southern gate, okay? They also have many, many other shops in town. They have, I think, five shops in town, plus a bar, plus an inn. So I would go ahead and I would come down here and I would go to this guy and I would buy his wooden backpack. Now, if there's not a wooden backpack in here, then I would then wait a day. You talk to Saint here. Wait a day if he doesn't have one. See, like today he doesn't have one, but he might have one later. Okay, he might have one the following day. Their, their, their inventory switches out sometimes. So I would, get, I would wait and, and come back and see if he has a wooden backpack. And you want to go ahead and start with a wooden backpack immediately. That's going to save you a bunch of time because I'm sitting here at the hub. Now, there are a lot of places to mine. There are a lot of places to mine. But if you start at the hub, there are a couple places right here at the hub where out of the western gate right here, there are two spots right out of the gate. On the left-hand side, you have an iron node, which can have up to three workers. But right here, twice as, it's worth twice as much. Copper is worth twice as much. There's a tiny uh, copper node right here, and it will hold two people. So what I would do is I would come down here and I would go and I would mine this little copper node right here. And then I would fill your, your, your brand new wooden backpack up. You can fit 10 stacks of nine copper each in your wooden backpack. That's going to give you 13,000 and change cats every time that you, draw, you, you, you empty it. So every time you fill it up, run back up here and it's going to take you a couple days and you might find bandits or the, the hungry bandits might show up. So I, I would highly suggest that you go ahead and you, as soon as you see them, just run. Just run from everything in the very beginning. And then come up to the bar. And then he has, I think, 14,000 cats that he, he, can, he can spend money on. So I would, and that'll, that's just about a little bit more than what you have in your backpack. So I would go ahead and I would fill your backpack up and do that a couple of times. Do that several times and by yourself. And then when you can afford to, then hire somebody. Now, there might be someone at the bar here. But I've kited enough bandits in and enough people have died that there's no, there's no new people in, in this bar. Let me open that door back up. There's no new people in this bar. It's like there's an assassin that comes in every now and again. It's a tech hunter. This one's a tech hunter. But usually it's just the bodyguards. There's one here. There's one bouncer here. And there's one up top, top here as well. And these bouncers will take care of almost anything. Their attack is 51, and their defense is 53. There's not much they can't handle. So if you, get, if you get attacked, just kite them into the bar, run upstairs if you can, and let these guys take care of business. And then go out, loot all their bodies, and sell it to the, bar, the bartender if you don't have a full pack. If you haven't like completely wiped him out of money, then scavenge as much as you can and sell to him. That's what I used to do early game. So early game phase one is going to be mining and scavenging. Did you forget to buy something? No, I decided not to buy anything. Okay, so as soon as you can afford, uh, afford it then, I want you to go and I want you to hire somebody. Hire somebody at either from either the bar, if there is anyone, 
or you can go up to stack and you can hire someone there this is this is the holy nation okay the holy nation is um they're, i mean they're super su everybody is super prejudiced in this game they don't like each other right holy nation doesn't like the sheks and the sheks don't like the holy nation but you know what they will work together i've got two holy nation and i've got four sheks right now but if you can don't hire sheks because they eat like 25 percent more of everybody else and you got to feed everybody so you got to be you got to remember sheks always eat more than the holy nation people but the sheks are better fighters overall they're going to be a better fighter so and also if you go down south and you hire someone from squin at the bar there may be someone or at the end there may be a freebie i got a freebie i don't remember if it was ruka or ribs but if you go to it's this inn right here from the, this is the north side of squin if you go to the if you go to the inn right here and walk inside oh if you, if you walk inside there might be a freebie i got a freebie off or off of these guys and, th and then go ahead and if you can't find a freebie then hire somebody for 3,000 cats. That's all you need. And then immediately after that, go back down here and get them another wooden backpack. Get them a wooden backpack so you can double up on your mining. That's what you want to do early, early game, okay? Is get two people mining right off the bat. Now, there are a couple, there are several places that you can you, you can mine from. This is just the easiest for me because going back and forth, it's so close to the, the gates right here that it's easy to kite any bandits that show up. And then by this point, if you wanted to, you could you could hire more people. You could have three people working iron and two people working copper if you wanted to do that. Or just keep with the two working copper. And then you could have one shuttling the money or shuttling the copper around. But I would highly suggest you do not separate your people. If you do, the chances of them dying are pretty good. If you have one person running around and you're focused on them, then the other two, you might not be able to see the bandage coming in from around when you can do a bird's eye view when you have everybody grouped together. You wanna to keep everybody grouped together if you can. So really, if I had to break it down to the first two uh, phases, it would be scavenging would be phase one, mining would be phase two. Phase three is gonna be, you want to buy yourself a house. Now it doesn't really matter where you buy your house. You can, uh, you can go ahead and you can buy your house uh, here at the hub. Or if you really wanted to go and you wanted to buy a house in Squin. This is the only house in Squin, I think. Or there's this one, and then there's another one right here. There's a two long houses in Squin that you can buy. Um, they cost a little bit more than a storm house does. But if you wanted to mine, you can actually go around the corner here. There's a copper node right here, which all, but it only holds one person. Okay, they only hold. It's big, but it only holds one person. Oh, but there is another iron node right here, and that holds three people. So you have one iron node here out or the south of Squin, Squin, and you have one and uh, and you have one copper node here. So that's four. It's four workers, but the 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 starving, but the starving um, bandits are really bad through here. They're really super bad through here. So I would highly suggest that you stick with the hub. Now I bought this one right here at the very beginning, but I would highly. Um, I would highly suggest that you don't. I would highly suggest you buy this storm house, either this one or that one or this one. It doesn't matter which one. They're all the same. Uh, just look at the cheap, find the cheapest one or that one. There's plenty of them around. And just buy a storm house and immediately put in your bench. You want to go ahead and put in your research bench right off the bat. It'll fit your research bench. And then you're going to want to go ahead and start upgrading your research bench and start learning everything that you can. And to do that, you're going to want to go ahead and go and you're going to have to buy books. Now, nearly every vendor has has have these books. These, where are the books at? Here we go. These are the research artifact books. Now, almost every vendor will have them. And if they don't, don't worry about it. Just go down the street and then go to the next vendor and they'll, they'll have it. Now, I mean, some armorers and some weapon uh, specialists, they may not have them, but almost every vendor has these books. And you'll want to get your that you want to get your re your research bench up to level three as fast as possible. Level three is where you want to be at because that's where it starts getting interesting. That's the highest level you can get advanced to before you have to start finding the advanced research books, the ancient research books. So you want to get this up to tier three as fast as possible and learn as much as you can. But the main thing that you want to learn, you want to learn the fabric loom so you can actually take hemp and make it into fabric. And you want to learn the clothing bench. So you can make bandanas, okay? Bandanas are really, really good money. Now, right off the bat, bandanas aren't that, aren't that great. Bandanas, to start off with, are only worth 175 cats a piece. But once you get 
one person, which I think my armor is ribs. Once you get your, once you get your armor leveled up, like right now, ribs is a level 78 armor smith. He's not great, but he's, he's better than he was. Um, and right now he made, what was the last thing he made? He made a specialist grade bandana and it was 692 cats. Okay, I'm making some other things for some other reasons. I'm training up some people so they have, like, I mean, I've got some high-grade stuff in here now. I'm training some more people uh, so that it's not great. But once you get up there in the specialist-grade bandanas, you're going to be selling them for almost 700 cats apiece. Why bandanas, you ask? Because it takes three hemp to make one fabric, but it only takes one fabric to make three bandanas. So you can go, I think that's what the ratio is. So it's basically one hemp per one bandana is what it ends up being. Now, once you've learned hemp farming, which you're gonna to have to learn in your research bench, once you've learned hemp farming, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to have to go to, down here into Squin, and you're gonna to wanna to go into this shop right here, which is your general goods shop. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and buy your hemp from this guy right here. Now he has a lot of stuff. He has cotton, he has wheat, he has, he's got, He's got electronics. He's got he's got iron plates. He's got armor plating. He's got all kinds of stuff. He's got copper. He's got straw flour. He's got building materials. He's got everything. But this is the closest place I think you're going to be able to get hemp, unless you want to go north. And you can just just look for this type of shop right here with the with the scales, and that's where you're going to find your item, your hemp. So you're going to want to get you're going to need at least ten hemp to make your smallest farm available to you. So you're going to want to go ahead and, and if you can't find enough hemp in one go, I don't think you will. You're going to have to stick around for a day and let their, their inventory refresh. Now, once you do, I've, I've set up my farm outside of the hub. And I went ahead and I would hire a couple more people to help you work it. And just make barrels, get hemp storage, and make barrels uh, for hemp storage that holds $250 apiece. And so you're... Your small wheat farm, I mean, sorry, this, this is my wheat farm, though. This is my grog setup. This one, for me, was phase three. I, you don't have to do this because it was kind of a long, drawn-out process, but it worked. I mean, I, I wanted to see if I could make grog, and grog is a pretty good, it's pretty good money. It really is. But so are bandanas, and so, so is mining. You might want to stick with mining. You might want to, you might want to stick with bandanas. But if you, want, I mean, cause, but if you do, you're going to want to make a hemp farm. Now, your hemp farm, the small one is going to require 10 hemp to begin with. That's all it is. That's the only material you're going to need. And you're going to be able to lay this down wherever it's green. Now, it's all red now because I have farms laid down here already. But this is the closest you can get to the hub walls on this side without having, I mean, you'd be able to put stuff down. So I would just, I, I wouldn't put any buildings down. I would just put down the farms and a well. Just and the first level well without any research. I, I don't think you have to research it. I think you can automatically make a well. I think that's that you can do that by hand. So you're going to want one person that's going to be hauling water, and you're going to have want other like two more that are going to be working the farm. You might, I mean, because it's going to take ten water, for well, you can fill you can fill the farm up with ten water, but I think it takes two water for the small one to be able to make uh, one round of hemp. And uh, but you're going to want the largest hemp farm you can make. Uh, so I, the large farm is going to you're going to take thirty hemp. So what I would do is I would save up your hemp three times around and then make a large one right away before you did anything and then just make many large farms like right now i i can make extra large wheat farms but that took me i think 60 but once i had one extra large i just went ahead and i took and i reinvested in another farm and then took these two and reinvested into another farm and then took these three and invested into two until i had nine this is my grog farm so i went ahead now for me that was phase three but anyway, once you get once you uh, put down a bunch of barrels, once you get all of it working, and then if you want to hire some more people, you can. And then if you get any of these hungry bandits come around, just gather everybody up, just left click and left click and just highlight everybody and then just go over here and right click and just put everybody on top of your on top of your your house right there. Close lock the door. And then I, what I would do after they're, they're all the way up is I'd take one person and go down. And then I would kite the, uh, the, the group that wants to attack you to into the bar. Or if you have the money, you can actually, if you have 10,000 cats saved up, you can actually go over here to the Shinobi Thieves. And you can actually buy, um, in, you can buy into the Shinobi Thieves for 10,000 cats. And you can run in here and these guys will, will all attack them. 
and they'll fight and then uh, they'll protect you. So that's pretty, that's a long way away though, considering the bar can pretty much handle whatever uh, gets thrown against you. And then once everybody's dead, then scavenge everything you can for extra caps if you're cats if you want. So anyway, phase one, mining. Phase two, bandanas. Phase three is grog if you want, because by this point you should have researched all the stuff that you uh, that you need for the grog farm, which is going to be your it's going to be your wind generator, your tier two wells, which are going to be they're going to be automatic. But you, you can use you can get three wells from one small wind generator right here. A wind generator is fine. Um, then I'm in here. I've got let's see what I did. I did one batch is all I did of grog. But that one batch. Let me show you the setup right quick so you can you can see if it's for you. Is I have nine extra large wheat farms. I have twelve barrels scattered around. I have three wells, one generator. I have two water storage. They hold 100 apiece. Then I have six grog machines right here. And I have one, I think it's six, uh, six storage. Six uh, grog storage that holds 25 apiece. So what I did was I had everybody work the farm until all 12 barrels were full. And then I had six of my people work the, the grog machines with one person running water. And filling the, the water storage from the from the uh, the water wells, so I had one person. I had seven people working the farm. This is my seven people I had here, and the pack bowl was just there. I had a pack bowl because at the the wandering traders, they come around. They have there are animal uh, traders that come around. As soon as you can buy a pack bowl, they are super super OP in battle. Once they get grown up and they learn, um, they they can they help you a lot because they have a knockdown attack. They have a charge attack. Um, if you can buy more than one pack bull, I would suggest doing it if you can afford to feed them. Highly suggest that. And in, I will, in a future episode, I will be showing where to buy pack animals that are not from the traders. There are cities here on the map that will allow you to buy uh, animals, uh, bone dogs and pack bulls. And I'm going to show you where to get those in a future video, okay? All right, cool. Because those are very important. Once you get them trained up, they're beasts. I mean, literally, they're beasts. But you have to feed them. So if you can't afford that, you might want to wait. So anyway, guys, I had all of this going, and I did 150 barrels of grog in one go, and that got me 135,000 cats. So for me, that was phase three, but you might want to bypass that and just stick with bandanas. Because the whole point behind the bandanas is to get your armor up. You want to get your armor up for phase four. But for you, that might be phase three. But once you get your research bench to tier three, you're going to be able to start making armor. You're going to be able to start making heavy armor. Now, what I did was once I got my, my one batch of grog, I came over here and I bought this longhouse. Okay? And I went ahead and I got ribs and, because he's my armorer. And I went ahead and put together a, he a heavy armor smithy. Once I did that, that's going to unlock the heart protector. Now, the heart protector is it's garbage armor. Okay, so as you can see, it's taking not quite one armor plate and one fabric to make one heart protector. Now... Armor plating runs about 500 and it takes 63 for a fabric. So that's about 600 for a heart protector. Now, if you'd like to mine, haul, and store your own iron, you can do that and you can actually create a plate beating station which will allow you to take raw iron and turning it into armor plating. But what I prefer to do, what I've been doing, is I don't bother with that. I actually come over and I go to the general store, the general goods store right here, and I actually just buy my armor plating from them. One heart protector is 1,155 for a standard heart protector, or standard grade. Okay, shoddy's going to be worth less. Standard's going to be worth 1,155. So you're doubling, you're almost doubling your money for making one heart protector just from standard grade. But if your armorer, once your armorer gets leveled up, like right here is a high grade, that's worth 2,487. That's not that great. That's not that, I mean, it's still, that's about four times your investment. But once you get up into the specialist, it's 4,352. And now ribs hasn't gotten any higher than specialist, but once you get into the masterwork grade, it ends up being 6,100, which is 10 times your investment which is definitely makes it worth your while. That's how I got my 557,685 cats in like a matter of a couple of days. If I, but I did a lot of dinking around. I did a lot of messing around. I didn't really spend a lot of time focused on the money side of things. But if you do, you should be able to do this in a very short amount of time, especially if that's all that you're focused on.
So guys, from my grog sale of 135,000 caps, I went from 135,000 caps to 550,000 caps in one IRL day. So it, I don't know how many game days that was, but once I got my armor working and I was running to the various towns selling all of the armor, I was, uh, and I was buying food as I was there so all my people could eat. I now have a half a box of meat. I didn't show you, but, but I have a half a box of dried meat that they're eating from. And so I go out, I sell my armor, I buy dried meat, and I come back. And then he's already made a, a bunch more. And then I go ahead and I buy more materials. I buy materials as I'm going out, buy food when I'm going out. Then I come back. I pick up the armor, drop off the materials and the food, and I go back out. And in one in real life day, I went ahead and made 400,000 cats. So they, it, that's with one armor. I'm, and I'm also leveling up two more armors so I can triple my money so I don't have to worry about money ever again in this game. So anyway, I hope this helped you out. If it did, you know, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do that right now. As I always say, I am my usual me. You be your usual you, and we'll see you in the next thing that I do. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.